All right. Hello, everyone. And thanks for joining us today, where we're going to dive into the industrial world of 3D printing. And we're going to talk about the new Mark Forged FX10. We got our printer not too long ago, and we've already put a few hundred print hours on it at least. So I thought it would be a good time to talk about our experience with it and go through uh, some of the capabilities and some of our favorite features. I'll start by asking, what do you think a Swiss army knife would look like if it was made for manufacturing? I personally think the FX10 might be as close as it gets right now. To explain why, I'll start with a basic intro to the FX10, which at a glance might not look too much different from a normal printer in that it can easily print complicated plastic prototypes, but that's about where the similarity ends because it has a huge build area it's incredibly fast and it's super accurate. So from there, we'll talk about what's probably the biggest benefit of this machine, which is a material selection that's specifically designed for manufacturing. That means things like flame retardant and food safe plastics, but that's really just the start because the FX10 has a second print nozzle to use continuous carbon fiber. And we'll talk more about what that means later, but for now, just know that using continuous fiber lets you make plastic parts that are insanely strong. We're talking the same strength as a machined aluminum part in some cases. If that's still not enough for you, the FX10 can even be used to print actual metal parts out of stainless steel. So it may not be a Swiss Army knife, but it could probably print one. And in fact, we've already designed a pocket knife for it. After going through some of the materials, I'll also dive into some of our favorite features that really make this printer stand out. So that would be things like automated inspection, multi-spool management, and vision-based print monitoring, just to name a couple. From there, I'll wrap up and show you how to get in touch with us if you have any other questions. Starting with the basic printer specifications, first up is probably the most impressive, which is a roughly 15 by 12 by 12 inch build area. And that's roughly twice the size of its predecessor, the Mark Forged X7. To take full advantage of that build area, it's also two to three times faster than an X7. And it's actually pretty wild to watch this print head flying around in the chamber when this thing is running. Other than that, we have a direct drive feed system, which has two nozzles. And if you're new to Mark Forge, one of those nozzles is for plastic and one is for fiber reinforcement, which we'll go into more detail on a little bit later. It also has a heated chamber for access to more materials, which also improves the quality and the strength of your parts. Last up, it has layer heights ranging from 50 microns for those really detailed parts and up to 250 microns to get parts out super quickly. We'll talk about materials next because it's probably the biggest differentiator for the FX10 versus any of its competition. It supports a pretty wide range of plastics that are specifically engineered for manufacturing. The most popular material on the FX10 is called Onyx, and it's a nylon 6 with chopped carbon fiber. And the nylon base sort of gives it its toughness and durability, while the chopped carbon fiber adds more strength and stiffness, and it also gives it a really nice surface finish. So the balance between those two materials makes Onyx ideal for jigs and fixtures, mounts, brackets, and even some functional prototypes. And again, Onyx is one of the most versatile 3D printing materials available, but of course there are those really extreme environments where you need some type of high temperature resistance and flame safety, and that's where Onyx FR comes in. FR is a variation of Onyx that is UL94V0 rated, which is a sort of a long way of saying that it is a self-extinguishing material. And that's a critical feature for those applications in aerospace, automotive, and welding. If you're working specifically in aerospace, there is an Onyx FR-A version, which actually comes with full material traceability documentation. So uh, you can continue to open up the door to even more advanced applications with that material. The final variant of Onyx is called Onyx ESD, 
and it's designed for electrostatic discharge sensitive applications. Uh, and so it's just a material that has a specific range of surface resistance and it makes it ideal for any type of like electronic assembly, uh, semiconductor handling, and especially in robotics. Now that we've talked about the different Onyx materials, let's look at what really sets the FX10 apart. And that's Markforge patented continuous fiber reinforcement or CFR. Unlike typical 3D printers that just print in plastic, the FX10 uses a second print nozzle and it lays down continuous strands of carbon fiber inside of your Onyx parts while they're being printed. The process creates parts that are strong enough to replace machined aluminum, but at a much lower weight. To take that even further, you can fully customize how a part is reinforced, so you can strengthen mounting holes and load bearing faces or entire layers while keeping the rest of the part light and cost effective. Carbon fiber reinforcement lets you use true end use tooling and create things that you would normally machine for metal. Uh, so we've got all kinds of use cases for this custom fixtures, those really high precision um, fixtures where you can't have any sort of deflection in your parts, uh, brackets, mounts, all, all kinds of stuff is possible with this carbon fiber reinforcement. And I could go on for a long time about it, but we've got a lot of webinars covering it. So uh, I would recommend looking into those if you want to know more. But for now, we'll keep on moving with the materials. Not every part needs that extra strength and stiffness from carbon fiber though. So the FX10 also supports a material called nylon white. It's still very strong, but taking out the carbon fiber makes it a bit more tough and flexible for those other applications. So it's perfect for when you need some more impact resistance or just some simple non-marring work holdings. And it's also possible to dye nylon white uh, for any color specific applications. But similar to Onyx, Nylon White also has a variant, which is called Food Safe Nylon. And it's one of the first 3D printing filaments that's actually certified for food contact applications. It was created specifically to support the food and beverage manufacturing industry, uh, but it's great for any other industries with high sanitation requirements because it provides a clean, durable, and safe option for 3D printing things like custom fixtures, guides, and tooling that are again used in FDA regulated environments. So it's perfect for things like production lines and packaging setups in those industries where that cleanliness is really critical. So now we've seen how the FX10 can print in a range of high performance plastics and reinforced composites that are strong enough to replace machined aluminum. But if that still isn't enough yet, there is another option for the FX10 for those most demanding applications. And if you're working in extreme environments or you need the mechanical properties of real metal, the FX10 can do that too. It has an optional metal printing kit that unlocks the ability to print with real stainless steels on the same printer that you were going through and printing all of those other materials on. Switching the printer over to metal only takes about 15 minutes. And there is additional hardware needed for washing and sintering the parts, but that equipment has existed for a while now already as part of the MarkForge Metal X system. So I won't cover them here today, but we do have quite a few videos over that stuff if you are interested. So just uh, let us know and we'll send you to those videos. But otherwise, um, there are a lot of metal materials in development for the FX10, but right now the two available are 17.4 pH and 316L stainless steels. They're already very widely used in manufacturing, so uh, there's a lot of information out there on them. And I won't go into too much detail, but I will focus on some of the key differences between the two. Uh, so 17.4 is incredibly strong and stiff. It has pretty good corrosion resistance and it's going to be ideal for custom jaws, dies, brackets, and tooling. This is the material that most people end up deciding to go with, but uh, 316L is another option that's very strong, but it's slightly more ductile. And the more important difference comes from its superior corrosion resistance. So it's a little more suited for 
uh, the marine medical and food industries where you may have that um, corrosive type material like you know salt water for example and that wraps up the materials section at least for now there's quite a few others in development but there's already no machine with this range of functional end use materials available all the way from engineered plastics to carbon fiber to metal material selection is one of the biggest differentiators for the fx10 but the machine does have some really cool functionality too so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the equipment that brings those materials to life. It is packed with features that make it faster, smarter, and more capable in production environments. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to focus on our three favorite features, the ones that really save us the most time and money in the long run. So that would be the vision system, part inspection, and multi-spool management. First up, the vision system. It's a high-quality camera that's attached to the print head. And that camera ties into MarkForge software to monitor a part during printing. And it uses the image data from that camera to assess the health of machine. And it can assess the health of a print while it's in the middle of printing. So it will actually stop the machine from continuing if it picks up on any issues. And then if, it, if there are issues, having those high quality photos can be incredibly helpful for troubleshooting what the issues could be. But that stuff's all during a print. So let's talk about what we can do after the print. Um, it's called part inspection. And it's, again, a great feature for after the print is finished. It uses another piece built onto the print head, which is a laser micrometer system. And that laser micrometer system ties into the inspection software that was created by MarkForge. The sensor actively measures a part during printing and the software creates a deviation plot report for that part. And inspection frequency is fully customizable. So you can have it run every couple of layers or every 30 layers, for example. And one of the best parts about inspection is that you can check tolerances on internal features that would be impossible to measure any other way. You can even specify your tolerance range and use it to check specific features of a part. Once you're ready and you've seen all that you need to, it'll automatically produce a quality report for your quality control team. So no more taking a part over there with some calipers and getting your measurements. It's all automated and you can hand it over. So the quality control teams really love this feature. It's not just for monitoring either. The inspection system uses machine learning, so it will find deviations on those parts, and then it will improve those deviations every time your part gets printed. So it just gets better and better each time. The last one that we'll talk about is the multi-spool management system, which is my personal favorite, which we'll touch on here in a little bit. But uh, most printers use a single material spool, which is fine, but uh, that can become a problem when the spool is almost empty because there is not quite enough to finish a part. So the printer either reaches the end of the spool and then it pauses until you replace it, or you replace it first and you end up with a ton of those partially used spools left over. The FX10 solved the issue by having four spool bays. So now you can load four um, spools of filament at once, and the printer will automatically switch to a new spool when one finishes. And so now you don't have to deal with that downtime or any wasted material. And the reason that I love it is because we, as a reseller and people who hold events for these printers and for SolidWorks and Mastercam, we never want to run a print and have it pause in the middle while we're at an event. So we have built up a collection of these partially used spools, and now we can burn through all of them. The other great thing about those spool bays is they're fully sealed. So it prevents any moisture saturation and material degradation, which is a big deal with any nylon based filaments. Uh, you can either load full spools or partial spools into the bay, which is again, how we're burning up all of those partial spools we have. And I could keep going with new features on this thing for a while, but I'll go ahead and stop here uh, again because it's my personal favorite and we'll wrap this thing up. So to quickly recap what we've covered today, MarkForge really nailed it with this one and the FX10 is basically one machine that can do it all. It has sort of the trifecta for 3D printing. 
It has a build volume and print speed that make it difficult to find a geometry that's not printable. And then you add in the material capability of engineered plastics, carbon fiber, and even metals, and it makes almost endless applications possible. So applications are great, of course, too, but you really need confidence in your parts and in the machine to tackle those applications. And the FX10 has that covered too with its automated print monitoring and quality inspection reports. It's one of the most advanced Markforge printers to date, and it's ready for your manufacturing challenges.